What's up boys and girls, Lambo here and today I will try to teach you guys ZVP late game to the best of my ability. Um, I'm gonna be talking about multiple different unit compositions and I think I'm gonna sort them from easy to use to difficult to use. And I'm gonna talk about strengths and ad advantages that each of these unit compositions have and then the disadvantages of each unit composition and what it is supposed to counter. So let's get straight into it. All right, now before I show you guys the first fight that is about to happen, I want to give a massive shout out to Soul who helped me um, with a unit tester. He played against me for about 40 minutes um, to, to just check all the different scenarios so I can show you guys how it's supposed to look. And then on top of that, I wanted to work with the replay initially. So uh, we, had, we ran into a little issue there, which was the replay did not save. Unit tester replays apparently never save. It's like the only thing. All the other arcade replays usually save, and obviously later games also save by themselves. So I thought I could just work with that. So instead, we had to do it all over again. So Soul helped me for like about one, uh, one, uh, one hour twenty, um, and not even with his main race. So he didn't really learn anything uh, too valuable from it. So he's the he's the real people's champion here. So massive shout out to him. Uh, if you guys want to test this stuff out yourselves with a Protoss player. It is, you can just go to the arcade and then write unit tester and it's called, I think, the Legacy of the Void Online Unit Tester, something along those lines. It's very, very easy to find. So, at, at the very first thing that I want to explain to you guys is how the armies are crafted before I get into what the easiest army is. The most important part about beating the Protoss late game is to get rid of the High Templar Archon Force. So, the Zerg army always consists of the anti- sky units uh, units so let's say it's uh, that's either hydras or corruptors right uh to some extent queens as well earlier on but it's mostly hydras and corruptors plus spellcasters and then it's the anti-ground which is much more important because if your ground gets wiped you just lose every single fight to storm pretty much so your anti-ground we're gonna have ultras which are the easiest to use lurkers which are a little bit harder because you need to borrow them and then Broodlords, which are the hardest to use because they're relatively slow and they can get caught off guard very, very easily. They can't really retreat. So whenever you mess up, you kind of just lose all your Broodlords and they're very expensive. So this is the general idea behind it. So if you watch a pro game and one guy has mass carriers and then you're watching Cyril and he morphs 10 Broodlords, even though the Protoss barely has any ground or only has a couple of High Templars, that's because that's the most important part. So always rather have too many anti-ground units than anti-air units. It's very, very important. Okay, another thing that I wanted to talk about right before we get into the actual unit compositions is um, I want to explain the math behind Microbial Shroud because we're going to see it a bunch uh, later on. Um, the way Microbial Shroud is, it is, it reduces the damage taken from air units by 50%. And that is a very decent tool if there is no ground uh, units from the Protoss left over, pretty much. Because against ground units and against all the spells, specifically Disruptors and Storms, Microbial Shroud is more or less just an orange uh, indicator of where the spells have to hit. So mostly it's a meme spell that isn't really used and it's not the most useful, but it is decent in some scenarios that I'm going to show you guys today. And the reason it works is because it actually uh, works in a way where it reduces the damage first and then the armor is taken into consideration. So it's not the, uh, the attack happens and then the armor minus the armor and then it's 50% from there, but instead it's, it, it ends up being much more than 50%. So for example, the carriers with plus three deal eight damage, whereas the Hydra has no base armor, so with three armor it has three armor. Uh, the interceptors attack twice each, which means it is 10 damage per attack, right? That's 8 minus 3 times 2. This is very basic math, so I hope you guys can follow me. But if you use Microbial Shroud, the way it works is it's not 8 damage minus 3 because of the armor, and then 50%, which would be 2.5. But instead, the 8 damage will get uh, reduced by 50, which means it does 4 damage now. And then afterwards, they use the... Um, the 50%, which, uh, not the 50%, the armor. So the, the, the interceptors now, instead of dealing 10 damage, basically, they deal two damage. So instead of five plus five, it's one plus one. 
This also works on Ultralisks. Uh, for, for example, this is also one that is noticeable where the Ultras now take half a damage from an Interceptor shot, which means Interceptor shoots twice, so it's one damage basically per Interceptor shot. So just keep that in mind when we proceed with this first army composition. So the first army we're going to take a look at is going to be Hydra Infestor Ultralisk. And the reason um, I'm going to show you guys this army first is because I believe it is the easiest army to micro. So if we're going over what the, the advantages are of this unit composition is that's the biggest one, it's easy to micro. Then the second one is that it doesn't really rely on spores. In fact, you don't really want too many spores because they can block your ultralisks. And you can also try to be offensive as long as the Protoss isn't behind buildings. And then the third part is it is a relatively cheap army. So even if you lose a fight, you should be able to rebuild it relatively easily. Now, the disadvantages are that once the Protoss realizes that you're going for this composition, he can just make a ground uh, part of his army into ground and it just gets completely stomped, like actually ruffled stomped. If he just makes, let's say you, you're you trying to have between 6 and 10 ultras, and he realizes that and he just makes 8 immortals and a couple of archons, you will get completely destroyed, like absolutely wiped. I believe uh, Loco even sent a replay to Hearthstone where something like that happened, and Hearthstone made a little bit of fun of him. Uh, so, so, so that's the main issue with this composition. You kind of really need to switch out of it once there is, uh, once once there are many ground units. Then the second thing is it lacks catch because uh, hydras need to actually just run under the carriers, which hydras are not the fastest units. They're not, and unlike corruptors, they they can't tank a whole lot. So it, unless you get a fungal on the entire Protoss army, usually you want to go through the interceptors first, which takes a while, and then at that moment, if the Protoss realizes that it's a bad fight, you can just fly away or and or recall, and you don't have the burst damage of Corruptor, so you can't punish him as hard uh, if a fight goes wrong. And then the third disadvantage is it's bad against buildings. If the Protoss just sits behind buildings and camps forward, you also need to transition out of it eventually, um, which usually is not the biggest disadvantage because you can then completely outmine them, right? If they just sit behind buildings or you can wait until they expand. And then the last disadvantage, which is also a very big one, is that it requires you to have a large portion of army supply within your army, otherwise it doesn't work. You need at least like 30 plus Hydras with enough Infestors, because Microbial Shroud costs a decent amount of energy as well. And then you also need the Ultras, otherwise the High Templars will just kill you. So then if the Protoss at the same time does Zealot run by, so you can struggle with it if you don't have... Um, Unless you have a low drone count, but then you have a low drone count, so you're just losing. So the, the, these, are, these are the main disadvantages. As you might be able to hear, this is not my absolute favorite unit composition. Um, we're going to call this the logo composition here, because uh, my Twitch chat calls it that. I assume Loco made a video about it or something. Uh, unless it's just the fact that he sent in a replay of this against Harrison. Uh, initially, I saw this from Rogue. I highly doubt that Loco made this unit composition himself. But <laughs> let's just give him the credit for now and let's see how it fights and what we're going to do during the fights. So I'm going to show you two fights, um, two different scenarios. The way your unit composition works is in this scenario, uh, I just make a couple of ultras. I send them in first with a microbial shroud that's not 100% necessary. Uh, unless your opponent has a shit ton of Void Rays. But as you can see, the Ultras uh, are alive and well, you can even make a couple less. But I think you should at least have like 5 Ultras, otherwise any Warpin at any moment in time will make it so the High Templars survive and then that's really not what you want. Um, you also might be struggling against High Templars and War Prisms, but I assume that your opponents are not good enough to do that. But the basic idea is that this is a very immovable composition. You just kind of aim move forward, and then you cast Microbial Shroud to wherever your Hydras are, and you fungal if you see clamped up Void Rays or clamped up Interceptors, and you have excess energy. If anything overextends, you can use Neural, but mostly you just want to spend most of your energy on Microbial Shroud. And you will be able to see how ridiculous Microbial Shroud really is. You can see these Hydras are barely gonna die. Uh, I left this in even though this wasn't the perfect fight for me, uh, because of how hilarious the end of that engagement looked, where you can really see how little damage the Hydras are taking, <laughs> where we're gonna see five Hydras battle four carriers. 
But the main execution is very simple. You just aim move, you even want to fight the interceptors at first. The more hydras you have, the better it is for you. Um, but the less drones you have, the worse it is for you realistically in game as well. So um, there's a decent balance. I think you can't you can't go to like a hundred drones if you also want to have a run by defense slash run by squad out on the map. It can be very high. So that's the first fight that we wanted to look at. Alright, now here's the second fight that I'm going to show you guys with this composition. Um, here I already gave Sol some ground units, but this was pretty much the best case scenario because he then even had less air units. Uh, also, your camera should be mostly on the proto side. You can always send forward some fungus to zone if you see your opponent is engaging into you. You saw the Archon overextended, so we neuraled it. And now he lost all of his ground units and the High Templars are zoned out, so they can't even get storms off. So this is the absolute best case scenario. Um, you use Microbial Shard in the back, you get rid of the Interceptors. Once you realize there's not that many Interceptors anymore, you can start a step forward and focus fire the Protoss units. This was absolute best case. I do want to put a reminder that this army, if the Protoss has a ground army that is competitive, you just should rather make more Ultras than more Hydras and then try to win a fight that way. But to be honest, if the Protoss has a lot of Immortals against this, you are just going to lose and you're going to have to switch out of this unit composition. And if you're thinking about which unit compositions you, you could switch into, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. In general, if the Protoss has a lot of ground, Brute Lords are the best, and Lurkers are also very decent. However, engaging your opponent with Lurkers can be very hard if the opponent doesn't run into you. So now here we have the third fight, which I'm just going to show real quick as well. In this scenario, I don't actually kill all the High Templars. And one of the things that Sol is not doing quite as perfectly as he maybe could have is he can storm while I'm engaging and then pull back his units a little bit more. But you can already see that this is going a lot worse than before. If any storms really connect Hydras, just kind of fall over. Um, same goes with Disruptors, but Ultras are very good against Disruptors, so this shouldn't really be an issue. Um, so yeah, th this is how a fight looks. This was still not, not even close to perfect for my opponent and he still could have much more ground units and more storms and maybe pull his carriers back a little bit and just try to focus fire the ultras at first. So in general this unit composition is not supposed to work if the Protoss has the perfect army, but if the Protoss just blindly makes a lot of air units and just has high Templars, not that much ground, is a nice unit composition to go into and is very A-movable. One other thing that I just wanted to mention really quick is that it is very important to en to be the one that's engaging the Protoss. So you don't want, um, especially with the army compositions like this, you don't want the Protoss to already shoot at stuff and then engage because the carriers take some time to get the max DPS out of them because they release their interceptors one by one relatively slowly now. So this is an army where you can have the jump on the Protoss and you actually should have the jump on the Protoss. It is very, very important. So try to maybe uh, see if... Uh, if you can distract him and then try to get a fungal on him and then just try to jump him whenever he's not um, defensively set up okay so the second easiest composition that you guys can use in my opinion is gonna be corrupt your viper ultralisk because you can still aim with a big portion of your army and you can only focus on controlling one portion of your units there are no extra spellcasters required uh, having some infester makes this better but it will be mostly about the Corruptors and the Viper Micro. Uh, you can use the Loco Maneuver. This also got the name Loco Maneuver because Harson just called it that. I am very certain that Loco was not the first person to do this. First time I heard it was a long time ago from the Maga, I believe the Maga and, and Bly as well are, were the first people to tell me this. But we are going to name it the Loco Maneuver because people in my Twitch chat watch Loco. So that's that's just uh, how, it will, how it will be known from from uh, this point on. So in general, this army is a lot is a lot more tanky than the Hydra and Fester army, and it doesn't, re it doesn't completely rely on the Microbial Shroud to work. And even if your Ultras get wiped, you can disengage a lot easier, and you don't just lose against Storms and lose your entire army once the Interceptors are released. So um, in general, this army is also mostly good if they just have very little on the ground. It's a very nice army that you can switch into if you at first start with Corruptor Viper Lurker or Corruptor Viper Broodlord, Infester, uh, either of those compositions where they then lose all their ground units with either run buys or they lose them slowly over time. 
doesn't really matter once I have no ground ground units. This is one of my favorite compositions that even I play, and it's relatively easy to control. So let's get into the fight. So we're seeing here I'm hotking some of my overseers with the ultralisk, and we're just going in head first with the ultras. I know the ultras are gonna zone out um, the high templars. Ultras very very tanky, and now I just go in. I dive on top of the parasitic bomb and I just focus fire the units one by one. Usually you want to abduct the mothership first to be able to get a look at where exactly the Protoss army is positioned. But if you actually know that all his ground units are high templars, you can pretty much just blindly send in the overseer ultralisk force. And it should do very very well against uh, the high templars while you then fly in because you know the high templars can't be at the front anymore. And you kind of just focus fire the army one by one. Now the reason this is more difficult then the Hydra part is because um, Hydras you can aim move and Corruptors you need to focus fire. Corruptors are not good if you aim move them at all. That's also why you see uh, pro players always clamp their Corruptors. That's on purpose because Corruptors need to focus fire the Protoss units. So you want to focus fire the units one by one more or less. Uh, obviously you want to... Uh, Avoid the time warps. Time warps are very strong against both Corruptors and Broodlords. And even Hydras now that they also slow down the attack speed. So try to completely avoid these time warps. And try to just full engage. This is the easiest. I don't want you guys to abduct too much. I think abducting the Mothership whenever you can uh, will help you a lot with setting up the fight. But... Um, in general, you guys should just engage and throw down parasitic bombs. Also, don't throw them all, all at the same time and try to throw them a little bit split up uh, because the damage doesn't stack. So if you throw one at the start and then one 10 seconds later, that basically means you got 10 seconds extra time of the parasitic bomb uh, being active. Okay, so now the next army that I'm going to show you guys, the next uh, army in the difficulty scale is going to be Lurker and Fester Hydra, where you can still aim with most of your army. Just uh, let it be known that I think this army is not good in anything besides defending. Um, if you're defensive with this army, it can be very powerful, but you can never engage a Protoss directly, and the Protoss, if he just doesn't run into you, um, can then expand relatively quickly. It has very similar weaknesses also to the Ultra composition, um, the biggest one being that you have no catch. So in general, it's super hard to chase down a Protoss army with this. Um, if there's any form of storms, and then this has one extra very very big disadvantage that, Which is that it just loses against high Templar disruptor So if your opponent is capable of controlling these two units at once even without any air units um, Yeah, you're just like it's there's nothing you can do you're just gonna be slowly picked apart by the disruptors um, Whenever you don't look and don't unborrow your lurkers right away, so I don't really suggest going into this composition whenever, but if you have massive difficulties going into Corruptors or using Corruptors, then maybe after you use the Hydra and Fester Ultra and your opponent has a lot of Immortals and Archons, um, you can try making some Lurkers instead of Ultras and fight the Protoss that way. But mostly this is just a very nice defensive composition, especially if you have a lot of Spores. You can get up to very very high drone counts like 100 or above and then it's going to be very very difficult for the protoss to do any poking until they have either tempest or disruptors so mostly a good defensive army but since soul attacks into me anyways most of the time let's take a look at how this fight goes so again whenever i see the void race clamped up i just throw down some fungus in general throwing some fungus while you're retreating can be very strong i'm throwing down um the microbial shrouds here and you want to stand your ground inside those microbial shrouds and he, he he's just losing all his high templars slowly to lurkers which if he wouldn't go forward that would not be the case but since he's attacking into me this is working relatively decently all now all the, that that all the interceptors are that i'm attacking into him but you can see how long it takes the hydras to clear up all the carriers and carriers can still shoot while disengaging so in general um yeah, the main weakness of this composition really is that you can that the Protoss can disengage and against a Protoss with a brain day. You should never really be able to do a whole lot. Now I told him to let me try and engage into him. Let's see how that went. Um it, it's a lot it's a lot harder to do. You need to lead with the lurkers, otherwise the high templars are gonna destroy you. And the problem is also you can't just um 
box select a bunch of your units with this because the infestors take priority over the lurkers so you can't just box select a bunch of your lurkers board and forward so now i'm obviously throwing a microbial shot in front of the lurkers because they're a little bit overexposed so did a good job with focus firing them keeping the high templars at the back and now that the high templars are going to come in you're going to see how it looks once storm basically enters the fight and yeah if he just storms wherever there's an orange cloud you're just going to get stomped so that's the next unit composition so the next theoretical unit composition that is a little bit harder but still relatively easy is going to be hydra and faster broodlord this just doesn't really work um overall because broodlords don't have enough hp they're not affected by the microbial shroud so unless you're standing behind sport crawlers it's going to be very rough in general this also just gets countered completely by tempest so like you, you just have nothing to to uh like even if you hit a hit a fungal on tempest you need to uh, fully engage with this army is not great at but in theory if your opponent is playing carrier void ray and then you're for example playing the ultra hydra and faster in this one scenario where if you don't want to get lurkers if you want if you want to be the one pushing especially uh you can just get broodlords instead and if he has too much immortal archon maybe some disruptors this can be decent in this scenario um let's take a look at how the fight goes so i engage into him i see he's bunched up a little bit so i throw in a fungal at the void race once again i microbial shroud i try to microbial shroud pretty much everything uh you you don't need to one thing that i realized is with the microbial shrouds you don't really need to worry too much about using uh too too many of them initially because even after the microbial shroud your investors will still have some energy but yeah i'm kind of I, I am getting rid of all the High Templars, but you need to at this moment also look at if you, your Broodlords are getting focus fired and kite back with the Broodlords, so it's an extra step of micro, and I think I might barely win this fight or barely not win this fight. Either way, it's not the greatest unit composition, and I think unless you go for the Ultra one first and then your opponent uh, looks to have too many ground units, I don't think this is something you guys should go into, but I wanted to cover it, because it's still relatively easy, especially for the guys that don't uh, want to use Corruptors, I think this is a nice option. Okay, so the next composition that's a little bit harder now is going to be Lurker, Corruptor, Viper. And this is already, again, a better composition. I think all the compositions with Corruptors and Vipers are better, but harder to use. And Corruptors have more HP and you can... Um, they, they have more burst damage. So whenever you actually wipe out the ground army of the Protoss, you, you just win the fight and you destroy him. Um, you can also kill a bunch of units before they recall very often and they work a lot better in common with vipers so it's a lot easier to use them with vipers also i don't want any of you guys to ever use vipers in different hotkin and corruptors it's too hard for me so it's probably too hard for you guys as well now um one advantage of lurker corruptor viper is that you can hold sport color lines very very comfortably and you can also use because lurkers are relatively supply efficient uh you can use uh lurkers also to try and break cannons so you can sp you can sp have two split lurker armies trying to attack cannons stuff like that you can also have more supply in general maybe in links or something counter-attacking stuff like that but uh, let's take a look at how this fight goes again here in general here by the way you can see how different it looks by the uh, if you if you see the protoss army or not you can see how much scarier it looks when you don't know where the High Templars are. So now we get a free abduct on the mothership, he casts the time warps, and we go away from those time warps. warps. Even though lurkers don't move, you still should not go under them. While I'm kiting back, once I see that he's clamped up, I will go for the parasitic bomb, and now we are just dancing inside the storm, which sometimes is fine, because then the Protoss will lose his um, carriers as well. Yeah, his interceptors, you can see most of his interceptors died to partly due to a local part, part local maneuver and the other part was to the storms and you can see that the crappers can eat a couple of storms and this ended up being a good trade even though i didn't micro even close to perfectly all right so now i told Sol to be a little bit more passive because he's always the one engaging into me so i try to show you guys how to abduct in general you can always fish for abducts it doesn't cost you anything and usually the the feedback as long as long as there is no tempest basically this never really hurts and especially low level protosses don't realize that they can have their high templars in front of their army like way in front of their army and if they see the lurkers move forward they can just run with the with the high templars um 
So the, the guy said, don't realize this, which is going to be all your opponents, you can abduct against them. And abduct range is very, very similar to, to, um, to feedback range, it's a little bit shorter, but you, you're going to get a feeling of this. Basically, if the High Templar is not in front of, the if in front of a unit, you can abduct that unit. So if the High Templar is on this, uh, at the same length, you can abduct it. Also, I have like 10 Overseers in my army. This is in general good against Mothership, but it also makes it harder for the Protoss to feedback. And you all, always want all your units to, to be super clumped up. In this case, we're going to get a, um, a carrier, but we eat a Storm. So Storm also a very, very strong zoning tool. And now he's actually going to get a bunch of abducts. Uh, not abducts, feedbacks. And now we kite back again. We go into the Parasitic Bomb, and now you're going to see how all the interceptors survive because I went into the <laughs> microbial shroud way too late. But corruptors in general just own carriers, by the way. Um, in general, also if your opponent just rushing carriers and doesn't have void race or any any ground, just make corruptors. They just beat carriers. So you can see you're like, hmm, this this didn't look this didn't look that great, right? I didn't micro it perfectly. I lost most of my viper energy before the fight started. I couldn't do the the local maneuver. Um, but corruptors just kind of own carriers because they are high armor units and they do. Uh, very good damage against the Protoss capital ships, so this is why you're seeing this outcome of the fight. Now at this point in the video I just want to talk real quick about how many units you want of each, in general about every unit composition because I haven't talked about it as much. In general I said it at the start of the video, you should have enough to beat his ground uh, comfortably, so you should have Enough Ultras to wipe out his ground army, enough Lurkers to make sure he can't run into you, enough Brutalers to wipe out his ground army. This is the most important part. Now, Corruptors don't actually scale um, that well the higher the number goes, because Corruptors just one-shot whatever unit you attack. And the most important count that you need to know is that our 20 Corruptors, but 21 Corruptors I think it is, with max upgrades against carriers, with max upgrades will one-shot them, so usually what I go with is at least 25 Corruptors I want. And then if I want to run off my army, I get a couple extra spellcasters like Vipers and Infestors. And in theory, if you lose a bunch of Corruptors, you still want to be able to one-shot them. So later on, once you have a huge army supply, you can go higher than 25 Corruptors as well, and that's also going to be good. But in general, you just need to know that Corruptors one-shot the unit, so having more Corruptors doesn't entirely mean that your army does more damage. So it's more important to make sure that uh, you have a lot of spellcasters and enough anti-ground. So the next army composition that I'm going to show you guys is going to be Broodlord, Viper, Corruptor. And the strength is that in direct fights this is very strong. In general, um, you should preferably also have Infestors with this army. In general, also with the other armies, because of what I just explained with the Corruptors, having some Infestors with it is very good, but I think for you guys, you guys should keep it as simple as possible to not try and have too many tasks and too many different hotkeys. Um, in general also, especially in late game, if you float minerals and you don't, you run out of gas, making queens, mixing queens can be super important. Uh, transfusers can be great. Queens tanking themselves can be nice. They even shoot down some interceptors by themselves. So th those are things that I'm not going to go super into. Uh, another weakness that this composition has is that it is very bad against Tempest. Or, or worse against Tempest, because Tempest can simply uh, zone out the Broodlords and always, whenever you try to engage, get a free shot and then kite back with Storms. And it's very, very hard to ever catch an army. So if you're looking for catch, um, this might not be uh, your army, or at least you need a Fungal before the fight starts. But I think most of you guys have more problems with carriers army, carrier armies. I actually am entirely not going into Tempest armies. I ha In the initial recording, or in the, in the first video, uh, in the first time I went to Unit Tester with Soul, I did go over Tempest armies, but I forgot in this one, so maybe I'm going to make an extra video on it. I think in general the perfect Protoss late game does have Tempest, but most of you guys just lose to Carrier, aim with Storm. At least that's what you guys are constantly whining about, so that's the one I'm going to show you guys. And then the other di massive disadvantage that this army has is that it is very slow. So stuff like Recall to one side, and then you go there, and then you Recall back to the other side. And then if you want, you can recall back. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, Mothership Recall does not have a cooldown. It's just merely, it costs 100 uh, energy, I think, which is half half the max energy of the Mothership. So in, in theory, you can recall to the Mothership, recall to the other Nexus, and recall back to the Mothership. And whenever you're without the Broodlords, you can't fight. So there's a bunch of weaknesses that this has. 
in general, like just um, being out positioned can happen quite often with this. But it is still a very strong army. For example, if you're an ultra corrupted Viper player, so if you like this composition, but then your opponent makes 10 immortals, that's the army that you should immediately go into, and then, and then you can push and you should destroy him. So let's take a look at how this fight goes. Also, sieging overseers can be very helpful, especially if you don't have spores, so if you're the one attacking. So now the very first thing I do again is abduct the mothership, and I kite back a little bit. Now I see where the High Templars are, and because of that I can go forward and pull a local maneuver for a little bit. In general, just these carries are exposed, so I'm going to one-shot them one by one. And every single time the High Templars go forward, my Corruptors go back. I think this is a great, great... I think this is probably the best clip of where you can see how much not having the mothership helps you. And how much you should look at the High Templars. If you if you go back there and play it uh, slowly, I'm pretty sure you're gonna see that. Well, my eyes are mostly on the High Templars that you might not be able to see, but you're gonna see that I try to dodge the storm uh, range with my Corruptors. So that's super important. And then we have this second fight where. Again, I'm kiting backwards with the Brute Lords. Once the Void Race camp clamped up, I'm gonna just throw a casual Parasitic Bomb in there while still saving some of my energy. I'm th even throwing down a second after the first one almost expired, so all the Void Rays die. I wait till all the till all the storms are almost expired, and now with the last Parasitic Bomb and the storms that he has, I'm standing inside them, and all the interceptors die, and it's another win for me. You can you can really see how the corruptors can tank a storm or two, and it doesn't really matter as much. Uh, carry your DPS against uh, corruptors, especially once the interceptors are dead. Obviously, is very low. So, in general, local maneuvers are very strong. Um, and yeah, that's the next unit composition. All right, so now this will be the final composition, the hardest one to control because you need a lot of different hotkeys. You should have one hotkey for Brute Lords, one hotkey for Infestors, one for Corruptor Viper. Uh, obviously, Zerg also needs a Queen hotkey, so if you have Queens in there, that's great. Usually, you also need a, some ground unit hotkey for defending Zealot run by, so this is where it gets very hard. I just want to say that I am including Infestors here because I think they're a big part of this army. And I did not include Infestors in most of the other uh, Corruptor Viper compositions, even though you can also add in Infestors with Corruptor Viper Ultra and Corruptor Viper Lurker. Infestors will always be good. Infestors are super supply efficient. I think in general having 10 Infestors is great, but I think for you guys it's best to just focus on the small things, unless you guys want to camp, in which case just having Infestor, a Viper and using... Thunder plus Parasitic Bomb can help you out immensely, especially against Void Ray heavy players. Um, even just Void Ray Tempest players as well. Uh, those, those units die very, very fast to Fungal plus Parasitic Bomb. So let's take a look at how the fight goes. I'm going to try to explain everything I'm doing, even though there's obviously going to be a lot of stuff going on. Right now, first I'm doing my hotkeys. In case you're wondering how I'm doing this, is with the Steel hotkey, so Alt. So we go forward here. <coughs> Need to disable the vision. And now we're gonna try to poke at him. And the reason this works is because he doesn't have Tempest mostly, so I can try to go forward and kill maybe an Archon or two. Now that we abducted some units, we can Neuroparasite them and use them for us for a little bit. You can also just kill them with the Corruptors, obviously. Um, we see he tries to come forward now, so we kite back a little bit with the Brute Lords, and the Corruptor Viper goes back because I know he's gonna use the Storms very soon. Now we go in, go on top of the Parasitic Bombs, we use Fungals, we can use Neurals now that um, there's nothing that can focus Fire the Infestors anymore and it's just a clean up, so a very, very clean fight overall. Now you're wondering what the priority should be. In general, if you see clumped up units, using Fungal and Parasitic Bomb should be the priority. But also, um, looking at your Brute Lords and making sure they're not exposed is very important. Um, if you see units from the Protoss overexposed, you should use Neural or Abduct, or both. And in general, I, I, I don't really have a, a priority list, a super high priority list, it's all very reactive. You basically just need to look at how the fight looks and then um, play accordingly. Probably, maybe actually the, the most important fight, fight once the fight, fight starts, or not during the fight, is also that you make sure that you're not in range of the... High Templars, so you, your eyes should be 
wherever the Protoss army is, and then make sh making sure that the High Templars are zoned out. If they're zoned out, you can go forward. If they're going forward, they're most likely going to die over time against the Brutelords, right? So that's where you go back for a little bit with the Crappers and Vipers, Brutelords, Lurkers, Ultras. All three uh, of those units have in common that they're relatively tanky, so if the High Templars ever go forward, they should die after a little while, and then once the High Templars are taken care of, you can go in, even if you warps in Mass Stalkers or something like that. Um, the, the Corruptors should be able to clean up the army pretty nicely. In general, also, if you have, like, Brutelord armies, and then there's Mass Stalkers, uh, or the Protoss just completely switches to Mass Stalker because you have still 30 Corruptors left over, adding Lurkers together with the Brutelords is very good. If there are Mass Stalkers. Okay, so before I come to an end, I just wanted to show you guys real quick how much better Corruptors are than Carriers in direct fights. If it's only Corruptors versus Carriers, obviously Void Race exists and stuff, but also a reason why you should focus for your Void Race very often uh, first. And how the game looks if you manage to clean up the ground army. Because I told you guys during the video, you should just make sure that you clean up the ground army, because then the air fight, especially with Parasitic Bombs and Corruptors, should be going your way. So look at this. I'm gonna let the carrier player just A move, because there is not much else he can do, right? This is how um, Zest with Micro 2 or Showtime or any Protoss Pro. And all you need to do is A move the or A click the, corrupt, the carriers one by one. And they're gonna die. And this fight might look different. I'm not even gonna split the fire. You could do something like this. And then uh, try to split the fire, but... Even just clicking the carriers one by one is gonna be enough. I, ju I just wanted to show how strong Corruptors are in 1v1 against carriers. Because I feel like that might get the point across that... The anti-ground is the most important part. Or is very crucial in general. Uh, no matter how you craft your army, if you see there's a bunch of Icons and Mortalists, just make sure that you beat those, and then care about the Sky units later. They do a lot of damage over time, it, that's that's obvious, but uh, especially if they don't fire right away and you jump on them, um, they're not that great, and this is not even with the Loco maneuver, which uh, then the carries would just kill nothing, straight up with one Viper. Uh, so... Yeah, let's, let's get to uh, the roundup of the video. Alright, so now that we're back at the library, I hope this could help a little bit. And I know all of these unit compositions are hard to control, even though... Even the easiest ones are relatively hard to control. But I believe you guys can try out all of these, and then see whatever works best for you. Um, I believe, in general, to have an idea what to do against the max out Protoss... ...is great, because very often... Uh, you guys just try to su you, you guys keep suiciding into the Protoss player because you're afraid that the Protoss reaches a max out supply and then the game is over. So if you practice this a little bit on the unit tester, you will realize that maybe you too can be the maxed out Protoss army, in which case you don't feel forced to attack anymore, which is a massive deal because I see you guys. Uh, just today, one of my subscribers sent me a replay where his opponent went to carriers, and pure carrier, on 50 workers, and then he attacked with 12 corruptors even though he had 15 in production. <laughs> so he didn't wait for that. Also, he was completely outmining the Protoss. On 5 base versus 3, the Protoss had 50, 50 probes. And then he just attacked with the Crappers and left the game because the Protoss was getting to a high carrier count. So I hope that in, for those scenarios specifically, um, this video should help, that you guys have an idea of what to do, especially if you know what to do. It's going to be a lot easier to execute, but you guys still need to practice this. Uh, because that's where you will learn how to micro yourself. Obviously, I have a lot of experience. Zerg late game also used to be strong, so it made a lot more sense. Um, like, like much stronger than it is now, even if you think now it's decent. Uh, if you look at with the Infested Terran, back then it was a little bit easier to control, but all the basics still remain the same with Fungal, Parasitic Bomb, and Abducts. Learning Abduct range is, is, is massive by itself. Um, but in general, if you start out playing the Protoss player, then you should also be able to win once you learn how to take fights and how to craft your unit composition. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe on my YouTube and leave a like. And also, you can check out my streams where I play late games semi-often, semi-frequently. I'm testing out new stuff every now and again on twitch.tv slash And other than that, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.